Hey guys, Merritt and Hondo from thermal-medics.com. Listen, we're inside today, taking the day off. Um, just wanna do a quick video about something I get called about all the time, emails, calls, and uh, Hondo and I are always answering this one. It's going from condenser fan motors, changing them from a three-wire configuration over to a brand new uh, four-wire configuration. So here's our new motor. This is like a spider web of wires. But anyway, basically what I wanted to show you guys is that going from a three-wire to four-wire is not a big deal. It just takes a little bit of time to go ahead and just work through where the wires go and what their job is doing. So let's go back to the original motor. Um, we had brown, we had black, and we had purple. Brown's traditionally a, a run capacitor uh, or a capacitor wire, if I should say, on color coding. Um, don't get hung too much up on colors, but brown and brown and white typically are going to be the capacitor. The old configuration had the brown going to a fan side of the dual run capacitor, and then we had um, our two power wires, each supplying 115 volts to get this motor to run off 230 volts. So what, when we're putting our new motor in, a couple of changes are going to happen. It's a four-wire configuration. So again, um, this is going to stay in your unit. The old run capacitor is going to stay in. Not the terminal hooked up to fan because you already pulled those off, but Common and Herm are going to stay on them because this still needs to start and run the compressor inside the unit. So leave this in. That's fine. It's going to stay there. And you can, that's absolutely okay. Keep it strapped in where it was. And what we're gonna do is bring in a second dedicated run capacitor that's only gonna be, its job is to start and run this motor right here, your brand new one. This is a seven and a half microfarad uh, run capacitor. This is gonna go in the cabinet near where this one is. Both are gonna be secured. Make sure you strap this thing in. Wrap some electrical tape around the terminals, whatever you have to do with metal, zip ties or something, just to keep it from bouncing around. You don't want it laying around where it can, where it can be jarred by the unit uh, starting up and uh, energize one of these terminals and just short it out. It'll just blow up and it's a mess. So make sure you strap this thing in. So now, your wire, you pull the old motor off, you got the blade off, and hopefully in one piece and intact. Um, you got your three wires taken off. Remember where these two power wires went. That's very important because on your new motor, you're gonna have four wires. The key on your new motor is look at the schematic. Each motor has a little schematic right there on the side that's gonna tell you some information about that motor, how it's supposed to be wired. Again, don't get hung up on colors. This one says brown and brown and white to a separate capacitor. Brown, brown and white to our separate capacitor that's gonna start and run this motor. This is into the terminal strap, done. That's two of your wires down. Next, we're gonna look, go back to our schematic, checking it out, and what do we got? White and black to line voltage. It says line, black and white to line. What does line voltage mean? Again, where these old two power wires came off of, this old black and purple, maybe they came off each end of the contactor, the tops there, one side to the other, or maybe defrost control board in the common side of the old run capacitor, that's okay. It does not matter. You just need line, these going to line voltage, each getting 115, 115 to get your new motor running off 230 volts, okay? So line voltage for those two, and what else? We're done, boom. We got our four wires done. So brown, brown, and white to the separate capacitor, that's done. Black and white wires to line voltage, that's done. This last part is about rotation, about going clockwise or counterclockwise. That's referring to these wires right here, which you're gonna find on a lot of replacement motors too. This motor will run in both directions. This is basically, um, what I do with these is fish them up through the barbecue grill after you've mounted your motor. Let's say it's mounted like that. Fish these up through the top. And then if you turn your motor on and just run the wrong way, you just pull a pop off one of the yellows, put it to, to purple, purple to yellow, you're just crossing it over. Again, it's on the schematic and a reverse rotation. You don't have to go back and turn the blade on shit. So that's, that's, you don't have to deal with that. Um, so that's your rotating wires, secure them up there. These, make sure after your motor's mounted, they're secured inside. They're not flopping around or not, there's no slack in them. Or they're, in, they're in a little tube possibly. Anything that's gonna keep them from getting sucked up and chopped up into pieces. Um, ground wire right here, very simple. These bolts are through bolts. A lot of times, most motors you guys are gonna get are replacement bolts. Our replacement motors have through bolts. You can unscrew these bases and you can fish these bolts. They go all the way through the body up and back. That will allow you to mount this, let's say, shaft down. And maybe you only need so much off the top. You can push, you can screw, screw, screw these down and you can take the excess down here um, or vice versa, up or down, whatever you wanna do. And then what I do is you can either if you have a lot of extra down here and you've got a fan blade that's gonna be mounted here to keep it out of the way, I can take those with a pair of just channel locks and just bend them down, or you can hack them off however you wanna do it when you figure out how much you need. Um, flat end of the shaft, I know this is kind of a dub, but I'm gonna go over it. Flat end of the shaft is where your set screw is gonna go into. Make sure you wrench down the set screw 
and then give it a little extra because you do not want that thing slipping. <clears throat> okay, that's over the basics. Let me give you one last thing, guys. Nobody ever talks about it anymore, and a lot of techs don't even do it. And um, these have drain plugs. There's a plug here, and there's a plug here. Whichever way you mount this motor, if you say shaft down, pull that drain plug out with a pair of uh, needle nose pliers and just pop it off. The reason why this motor runs, let's say 200 degrees Celsius inside, let's say it's on a hot, hot day, so things cranking, it's totally enclosed, right? Water's not gonna get in there? Well, that's actually, it's incorrect. Moisture is in the air all the time. This motor gets hot, it's running. Moisture is drawn into the motor. You're gonna get uh, the, the moist, or the hot air will hold more moisture than the cool air will. So when that motor cools down, you, you might have excess moisture in the air. The, um, the, wa the water inside there will, con will condense as the motor cools down and it will uh, mix with the oil. And if this unit, will, this motor will literally start filling up with water and prematurely fail. So I mean, let's get these things run for you know, 10, 15 years instead of two or three. Um, pull those drain plugs out. As the water condenses inside, it'll just, just drip out via gravity. So if your motor's shaft down, pop that drain plug out.